Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Welcome back to the stream where I build uh, stuff in, in public. I love making stuff and my main medium for building stuff is Swift. And what we're building is a open source uh, sign-in with Apple server. Um, you probably already use sign-in with Apple uh, in apps that you've downloaded yourself. Um, and this is how uh, this is what goes on on the back end. Um, now signing with Apple is supposed to make things a lot easier for developers, and it does. Uh, but there's still there's still quite a bit of things to do. Um, uh, we've been working on this project for uh, a few days now, and uh, a few weeks now, I guess. And yeah, there's still there's still a lot to do on the server. Um, but we did make a bunch of progress, and currently we have the the main server, uh, FQAuth, and we have a, a sample microservice that's going to use that, and it imports the middleware uh, from the main server, and we have an, uh, an iOS app, a sample iOS app, um, that exercises all of this to show that it's all working. Um, now the sample iOS app, it uh, and the sample microservice, it's not really doing much. There's really just uh, two things that it does. Um, you can get the latest random string on the server, or you can post to create a new one. Basically just showing that we have persistent information that's authenticated kind of the smallest thing possible um, and accesses a database. Oh, I think I need to adjust the volume. Let's see if that's a little better. Uh, yeah. So before we dive into the work, uh, I just wanted to call out we're at 169 out of 200 Twitch followers and 89 out of 100 YouTube followers. I'm going to dress up and do a tie stream when we hit either of those goals. Um, but for now, let's uh, see where we are with uh, with this stuff. So I have the app running right now on my phone, and I have uh, ngrok set up because I also have the the main server running on port 8080, and I have the microservice running on port. 8081. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. So yeah, let's try um, signature verification failed. So this is what we were working on at the end of the stream uh, yesterday. And uh, I was trying to figure out exactly what the error was. It looked like we had the uh, What the middleware was trying to decode and what the server was trying to decode were uh, two different things. Um, and I don't remember exactly if we, how far we got with fixing that. Um, a few off session token. So I don't know if the order of these matter, but we have we have all five things here, all five things here. So let's, I guess let's put them in the same order. Oh, and this is the uh, microservice, so I can't edit this stuff. Okay, so let's hop over to the main project and open those same two files. And I bet there's a test we could make for this. Uh, alternatively, we could try to um, reuse the same item. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, let's let's make a verification test. I guess the middleware would have access to to both, or should we make a uh, should we make a third package? Uh, let's see. 
guess let's write down what we're doing. We'll say the current task is um, token doesn't uh, decode, or middleware can't decode the token. Middleware isn't decoding. token from the main server. So I guess uh, we want to write a test to make sure that they play nicely together, uh, possibly make a shared share of the code so they're using the same exact one. Um, but of course, first let's let's just let's just try it again. Uh, so let's go ahead and sign ourselves out. Let's bring up the phone. So we're going to sign out, we're going to sign inside with Apple, we're going to look at the phone for face ID. And okay, so we're still getting the same error. So, so yeah, let's, uh, I guess let's go ahead and write a test to try to figure out uh, uh, what's going on. Because even if we do figure it out, we do want to sort of uh, solidify this as, as something that will always work. Um, and I guess, I guess I'm thinking, I'm trying to look into the future a little bit because um, right now the, the middleware and the server are both shipped in the same package. And the intention is that Um, when we actually get to 1.0, these will be two separate packages so that your own microservices can just import the middleware and not have to bring in the whole server uh, as part of the dependencies. Um, and I'm thinking about that because the tests I wanted to write, I want to use, I want to use code from both. <laughs> um, I suppose the server could import the middleware, actually. Because the middleware is super small. Um, yeah, so let's, let's try that. Let's try that. Uh, let's see, where should we stick this? Uh, let's just stick it right here at the root right now. Um, and this is going to import uh, the server and the middleware. And right away, I believe the compiler is not going to like this. Well, for one, we need to import XC test. Oh, okay, I guess the compiler isn't as offended as I was expecting it to be. Okay, so how do we want to do this? I guess we want to we want to make a server token, sign it, and decode it as a middleware token. And likewise, we want to make a middleware token and decode it as a server token. Um, and I guess uh, one more alternative would be to to go the sharing code route. And if we do that, 
then I guess we delete this. Um, let's see, we, I guess we delete this and only use the one from the middle layer. I guess that's the two options now. Uh, test both types against each other. Or uh, share the code. And if we share the code, it should it should just work, right? Um, and we won't need a test just for signing and and decoding because that that should already just work since it's the exact same type. Let's see, so if we comment uh, all this noise out, say let's make this an extension on FQ auth uh, session token. And because we're importing from somewhere else, we need to make a public initializer over there, which we kind of have. Uh, so let's adapt this to use uh, that stuff. Uh, self dot init. Um, User ID uh, device name will be device name. Expiration will be I guess we'll copy this in. And let's go ahead and organize these lines. And the issuer as well. I wonder if it's just the issuers that are um I wonder if it's just the issuers that are out of sync with each other. Let's go ahead and put these in the same order as the other one. Ahead and take that import. And now if we run the tests here, do we all do we pass? Tiniest little testing indication in the top right corner of the screen. Uh, we had some snow earlier today. It looks like the snow is over, and as usual, none of it sticks anymore. Oh, test completed. And they're all green. Okay, that's great. And I wanted to... Okay, so we can clean this out. And I guess to check the issuer, I need to look at the to look at the environment variables. Uh, so I guess I'll do that. Um, uh, off screen, staring directly into the camera. Uh, so here's the Apple ID. Close that file. Let's make sure that it matches what we have for the. Uh, oh, I don't have the microservice open. Let's go ahead and open that up. Nova open recent microservice. And let's take a peek at its env. Oh, this 
doesn't have this in the environment. Um, but the verify doesn't doesn't check the we're not checking <laughs> the issuer, um, which we <laughs> we probably should, but I guess we're currently not. Um, Yeah, we just verify that we're not expired and that we actually get a UUID. Okay. So let's uh let's restart the server. And I guess let's commit and push up so the microservice can get this code as well. Uh, let's see, tower. Uh, I guess we don't need this file, actually. We ended up not going down that route. We ended up just sharing code. Uh, share code to make sure we're using the same token. Uh, the token types, the token structures match. So let's see, so this is running. Here is the microservice. Um, let's update over here. No, oh, so close. Update package, there we go. I guess let's command dot to stop that from running because we're going to restart it. And let's run the tests here as well. Okay, that's that's working. Oh, it's testing. Test succeeded. Okay, so all the tests pass everywhere. So let's we have this started again on 8081. Uh, do I need to restart the iPhone app? I don't think so, but just in case, let's do it. Let's bring up the iPhone app. Signature verification failed. Okay, so let's sign out, sign in. Yeah. Okay, so let's put in some breakpoints. I guess let's put the breakpoint here. Um, I kind of want just like a refresh button. Travoke says, what's up? Sup? I won't be able to contribute much, but I am lurking to... Boost your stats trademark. Right on. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. All hail the algorithm or something like that. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's add a... Let's add a refresh button, I guess, so we don't have to keep restarting things. So here's the app. Here's our screens. Here's our random string view. Uh, and I guess both of these could have a uh, refresh view, I guess, refresh button. Cannot find a refresh button, so let's make one. I guess right here, refresh button is a view. And I guess we'll just have a button with a title, refresh, 
and an action and uh guess it needs access to the controller uh which could pass down um yeah so it's passing the controller so this is a i guess it's still an observed object right observed object for controller but it won't create it itself. Julian Velez says, hello. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Bruce Leaf says, we need more Xcode Twitch emojis, <laughs> like when tis pass or something. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, that's a great idea. Uh, where is my to-do list? Uh, Twitch emojis for when Yes, pass. Julian Velez asks, where are you from? I'm from New York City. Okay, so we made a refresh button. We have a new to do and we can pass the controller on in. And then to refresh, we'll just call uh, controller dot Oh, async refresh is used in a context that's not support concurrency. Okay, so I think what we can do is stick this on a task, right? We can get fancy with like turning off the a button or something, but I'm gonna gonna pause on all that for now. Um, but let us let's put a border style on it, border prominent. Julian Villas says greetings from Colombia. Right on. Okay, we're still getting the verification failed, and. I look in the microservice, we're not even hitting not even getting to here at all. Um, oh, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. She guess means we're at 170 out of 200 for the goal. So that means I guess we're failing before we even get here. Um, let's see, so we're not checking the issuer. Uh, we're not checking issued at. Um, so what what could be failing? Um, do I have the wrong key shared between uh, these two things? I guess this is again. Uh, let's see what's in the env here. Wait, that's the sample iOS app. Key auth. Let's check the environment here. Make sure that the private keys match up. Copy that one, close this, and head to the, oh, we don't have the, oh, the microservice is up over here. Make sure the private keys match. Oh, okay, that might have been what it was, because uh, <laughs> that something changed. Okay, so I guess if your keys don't match up, your key, your <laughs> JWTs won't be, um, <laughs> won't line up. Okay, so we just restarted the microservice. Uh, let's restart the server. And let's go ahead and bring out the phone and see what's going on. Do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. Okay, so let's sign out. Sign in. Do the face ID. Nice. So we actually have our <laughs> we're, we're successfully signed in, but now we have a different error. Data cannot be read because it isn't in the correct format. Okay, so we've got some data. Um, where should I put this? Maybe over the to-do list. I'm not sure what to do with this. 
data can be read because it isn't in the correct format. So I guess I tried to parse something. Okay, so let's look at the phone. And I don't see where this would be throwing from. Uh, I guess we can put breakpoints here and... Oh, oh, wait a minute. This is not an error from... This is a different error. This is an error on the login screen. Data compare to Okay, so let's see where this was coming from. Uh, so if the login controller on sign in uh, handle authorization. Uh, we could also cheat a little bit and see what the server spit out. Nope, nothing coming back from the server. Nothing in the log here. I'm looking at my phone like it's going to tell me where the error is. <laughs> um, uh, but I guess the middleware is now current is uh, successfully decoding the tokens. We just have a different problem. Uh, let's see. Sign in decoding. It is erroring now. Yeah, let's put some breakpoints here. Let's try signing in again. Oh, I have to show the phone. Okay, we're getting through to here, and we tried to decode, what do we get? Okay, we got our tokens, we got our name, we got our ID. Uh, so that's, that's looking good. So then where's the error happening? Uh, let's take off these breakpoints. Oh, now we are signed in? Receive the request for a different host in the current tunnel? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, I think I need to restart my ngrox or something. Okay, I guess we'll say <laughs> restart ngrox. And of course, let's stay hydrated. Or maybe I just have my maybe I just have my Earls crossed. This one's connecting to the microservice. And the login controller is connecting to let's see, I guess it's here in handle authorization. Yeah, it's going to the auth server. Hmm. 
Hey, Dragon Dust, haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Um, we're doing well. We just have uh, some issues with Ngrok, I think. So we're resetting some environment variables. And let's reset the microservice ngrok for 8081. Oh, I guess. Oh, I'm not passing along which port to go to. Oh, OK. So that's not ngrok's fault. That's that's my fault. <laughs> no, ngrok should, should take care of the port, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's regenerate the project with swish swish project, and then let's run the app. Uh, bring the app up to here. Get a breakpoint. That's nice. This is in the app. I need like a even bigger screen. I guess let's put the phone over our to-dos, I guess. It's as small as I can make it. Oh. Okay. Uh, and if I refresh, nothing bad happens, right? Okay, it looks like we're authenticated. Okay. So I guess the next step is to add a generate button to show that it's that it's changing and that we actually have one because right now the default case is a new user doesn't have a random number in the sample app so let's go to the uh, random string view and add a uh, regen <laughs> thanks dude uh, Bruce Leaf says I was here when FQ off <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah let's put these in a horizontal stack a refresh button and a regenerate button I guess Oh, thanks, autocomplete. That was completely unnecessary. And we'll just stick it here for now as well. And we're gonna just copy paste to save on some typing. We get the observed object of the controller. And of course, we'll have a button again, and this will be uh, regenerate. And we'll just pop a task off uh, to the controller. We're not going to do anything fancy with the button state. We're just going to kick something off. That might be something we do in the future. And let's do a button style as well. Instead of bordered prominent, let's just call it bordered. Oh, because we haven't uh, implemented regenerate at all. But it's there. OK. Let's go ahead and implement regenerate. Uh, so this is, yeah, just to create, tell the server to generate a new random number. So let's say that we are async. And the URL that we're going to hit is uh, API sample uh, new, and it's relative to uh, the URL of the microservice. And it's going to return back some data and a response. And 
and we will, yeah, I guess we can stick this on the networking helper. Oh, and I guess we need an HTTP verb here because we made it a post. Um, so I guess we need to update this to take an, well, let's see, what is it? Request.http method. Oh, this is just a string? There's no, uh, there's no HTTP method. Okay, fine. It's a, uh, it's stringly typed on iOS. I was not expecting that. Uh, that is one drawback of going across many different platforms and languages, you kind of forget what standard in one <laughs> is like not even existing in the other. So this is a post. So we'll make the call and then we will await the result. Now I want the, the nicer the syntactic dopamine of the trail enclosure. And what does this return again? Let's swap back over to the microservice and look at the, uh, oh, that's the FQ auth stuff. Where is our controller here? Uh, so this does return, this does return the new string. Uh, so let's go ahead and yeah, we'll expect the string back in the body, just like we do for uh, refresh, actually. Okay, so we have a, we have to surround this with a do catch for this try right here. And yeah, I guess we can just do what we did upstairs. Just say it's an Earl session error for now. Okay, let's put it back on the phone. Command R. And let's hit that regenerate button. And we got a new random string. We can refresh and yeah, the <laughs> microservice is working. Uh, let's commit before it runs off into the wild. Uh, this is just the package resolution. Let's update the iOS app. Where is it? Here it is. Refresh and regenerate buttons. It's amazing you get done with a fresh brain. <laughs> uh, now we got to make it, I guess, pretty and usable and all that stuff and uh, reusable uh, since this is we're hoping to make this a kind of a drop in library on all counts where uh, you can just drop this into your own app. Uh, but before we get to that, let's do, a, let's do a little break, do a little celebration break, and I'll be right back.
Hey everybody, welcome back. <laughs> Bruce Leaf. <laughs> Bruce Leaf said, this is super cool. Two exclamation points, amazing job. Purple heart emoji, time for shots. We can shoot some, some water. <laughs> and Bruce Leaf says, a uh, reminder to follow. Uh, yeah, trying to get trying to get a few more followers. We have a goal when we hit 200. Uh, we'll do a tie stream. Same thing for YouTube. We're a little bit closer there to 100. Um, yeah, so right before the break, we got um, we have our I guess our end to end. We have all the bridges going. Uh, we have. Oh my God. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Uh Bruce Leaf just gifted 20 tier 1 subs to the community. Oh man. <laughs> dude, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who just got the just got the subscription, join the Discord for a few perks in there. See the subscriber only channels, dude, man. Thank you so much for your support over the years. For years, it doesn't mean isn't isn't even been one year yet, and it feels like years. You've been in here day in day out, cheering along, and it's it's uh, single handedly carrying the stream, dude. Uh, thank you so much. Got all the hearts going. Oh my god. <laughs> Bruce Leaf says, I'm so happy for you, mate. Two exclamation points. We are off. Yes, we are. We got end to end working. Keep it up, man. Loves this, says Bruce Leaf. Thank you, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy cow. Who knew that who knew that making something that already exists would get a whole bunch of gifted subs? I mean, like open source, maybe it's not open source, but like you could do this with just Firebase or something. Uh but yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that my vision for for kind of making making everything and showing how it's done resonates with you, dude. It's it's a, it's a dream come true, some might say. So that was 21. So if we sign out, we still see 21. Sign back in. Yep, it's the same number. We can regenerate, sign out. Sign in. I didn't write down the number. Was that the right number? Okay, regenerate. We're at 79E. 79E. We're going to sign out. Sign back in. 79E. Yeah, it all, it all lines up. Uh, cool. So we have... I guess, I guess I didn't need to restart Engrok. That was something else that went wrong. Um, so we have end-to-end -end sign up working. Uh, so now I need to uh, make it pretty. Make it reusable. And... Uh, I guess everything everything else on our to-do list. <laughs> um, but we can mark this to uh, done. The sample is well, I guess I guess we could just make this a little bit a little bit prettier. Um, uh, this is just kind of a little bit of an eyesore to look at. Um, we make this a little bit more standard to look at. Um, 
Oh, it won't shrink down anymore, no matter what I do. Okay, so I'll stick that there. Uh, or, yeah, I guess there, because if I, if I put it here, yeah, it's going to go behind. So I'll stick it over the task list, over the song. Um, Uh, so do we need like a navigation view here? Um, oh, also what's our current uh, commit state? Make sure we're clean before getting too excited. Okay, yeah, that's, that's neither here nor there. Oh, I guess I don't need to show the phone while we're just making things prettier because we have the preview, right? Wait for that preview to load up. Okay, cool. And there's no way to see all of them at the same time, is there? Okay, well, let's start with a navigation stack, I guess. And we're not really navigating anywhere. Um, but I do, that's how we get a top bar. <laughs> Cannot find navigation. Oh, stack. Okay. So then we can say um, uh, navigation title. This can be a uh, random string app. Just to say what we're doing, and that's that updated. That's nice. Um, and I guess we can put the sign out button in the navigation bar. Or is it in the toolbar? Uh, sign out button. And then we can remove it from here. And then I guess this can go uh, in like a bottom toolbar, perhaps, at the bottom of the screen. Um, I mean, it doesn't quite make sense for this app. Like everything was fine, kind of all squished together. But it'll simulate, I guess, a uh, a real app a little bit better. Uh, let's see. And then can I say, Can I say where the toolbar goes in here? Let's see, let's command, let's look at some documentation. Oh man, if I comment this out, can I see documentation? Yes. Toolbar item group, so how do we tell it to go Uh, to the to the bottom of it <laughs> placement. That's what I'm looking for. Principal and navigation. Okay, so let's try that out. Let's say this is a. Uh, toolbar item and the placement is going to be dot principal or navigation. So 
So that's that's like the options. So then how do I stick it at the bottom? Okay, I guess we'll just do it old school without a toolbar. Um, put in a spacer. Uh, I guess this is uh, this one. So we can put a spacer in between as well. Come on, don't be shy. There we go. And let's look at the first one. How does that look? It's fine. Uh, spinning for loading is fine. I guess we can say the words uh, loading here. So not loaded, loading, response data. Okay, so then let's, that needs a spacer uh, here. And is that all four of them? There's one more at the end. Okay, so that's a little bit nicer to look at. And let's see it live on the phone. Okay, so there's our random string that we had before, 79E. You can refresh, and that doesn't really do anything because uh, it's the same. We can regenerate, and that'll make a new one on the server and show it back on the screen. Uh, oh, I still have that word hello. How do I remove that? Because the hello is not here. Oh, maybe it's from the app. Yeah, it's from here. Okay. And I guess this doesn't need to be in a VStack. Go ahead and confirm that. Let's bring the phone back out. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's still building. And so we can sign out. And sign in. Um, yeah, maybe it wants to be like a, a profile screen instead, instead of just a straight up sign up button. Um, uh, so we can't make the, we want to keep the sim sample app simple but we also want it to be uh, somewhat representative of what an app might actually feel like. And there's very few apps with only a logged in screen and nothing else. So of course we can say uh, profile screen here. And this can be a V stack with, I guess the, the user's name and a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, now I have to do like navigation <laughs> um, on the navigation stack. Uh, which might be fine. 
And I guess I kind of want to, uh, yeah, I don't want to get too bogged down in navigation just for the, just for the sake of an example. Um, maybe we'll show a, a modal. Uh, when they click the, I guess now the profile button. Is a modal really going to be that much easier than a navigation, though? Uh, maybe, maybe we should stop here. <laughs> uh, I guess you can hear me kind of thinking through all the various options here. Um, Yeah, I guess if anything, the navigation stack would go out here. And I got to remember how to use this. Set up some navigation destinations. That's a lot for, <laughs> for a simple app, for a sample app. Um, And then to make the previews happy again, we can stick uh, each of these in a navigation stack. So that these look right. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of curious to, to try this out. Um, so what do we do? I guess we have like a, like a route or something that's like a, a state at the top level. Is that what the cool kids are doing these days? Uh, it's not conformed, so I guess we'll start it off at uh, random string, I guess. And we can set the state here. Oh, we have to say that this is a navigation path. Um, can this inherit from navigation path? And I guess we can say this is stringly typed. Does this need to be a an array? Uh, let's look at the documentation. Oh, it needs to be codable.
I could look at another app where I did this, uh, but why? Why would I want to do that? Uh, let's see. Oh, I see. Requires the app route conform to sequence? Really? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can move this app route out to there. So then how does uh how does this view access all that? Um I guess we can we can pass it in, right? We can pass in the current route and then edit it because this is a is this a struct? This is a struct, so it's not exactly passed in. I guess we pass in a binding to it. path at uh, binding cannot convert value of binding type Yeah, it just needs it just needs a label and possibly something else. Insert dollar sign. Yeah, there we go. Oh man, and then it wants a, uh... <sighs> these things want a current path. Um, is it okay to put this in the environment? Is that too spicy? Uh, let's try it. an argument for current route. Oh, then I have to make an environment key. Okay, yeah, let's stick with I'll stick with passing it in for now as a binding. Uh, which means updating the all these folks down here. Uh, let's see, is this before or after? Uh, 
uh, a constant will be um, uh, app route dot uh, random string, I guess. Yeah, this is just this is just such a mouthful to put here in the in the preview. This is like unreadable now. <laughs> Well, first we'll make it work, and then we can we can clean it up more. Yeah. So instead of having a sign up button here, uh, perhaps we'll have a button that just says profile. And it sets the current route dot append uh, app route dot profile. Cool, so we can run this on the phone and watch it crash. This is interesting. Yeah, so it's add some navigation. I was hoping it would crash, because that's more exciting, but it just gives us some stuff down here in the console. Less exciting, but same idea. Uh, navigation destination. Cannot convert type of app route to expect to type d dot type. Um, let's see, what did I mess up? Can't even see the. That's one of the annoying things about SwiftUI is if you mess up too much, that you can't you can't even look at the documentation. Or sometimes the whole documentation just crashes too. Let's see, navigation stack. This should have a navigation destination. Yes, what's the... Oh, four. Oh, okay, it's just the data type. I thought it was one per route. So we can switch on the app route. Profile screen. Bring back the app. Uh, still a little bit of a link search for destinations in any surrounding navigation stack. A navigation link is presenting a value of type app route, but there's no matching destination. Uh, yeah, there is. It's right here. Oh, it has to go on the inside of something. Okay. Can I say uh, empty view? Can I do this? Uh, 
I guess so. And back, <laughs> back goes to empty view. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we want to make this start out as empty, huh? Dragon Dust says, the destination has to be inside the navigation stack, I think. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Now we can move the sign out button to there. Let's reformat this file. Uh, so let's see, I guess we want to say something like, uh, how do I show everything at the same time? I guess we'll put it there for now. So I guess we can, we can get the, uh, the login controller out of the environment. And we might want to say something like uh, signed in as uh, login controller dot current authorization. And we shouldn't be here if we're not uh, signed in. And I'm kind of curious if we can get this to crash. Um, user dot full name, you can say uh, signed in as. bold, of course. Oh, signed in as me. That's amazing. Um, and I guess we'll have a sign out button. I guess we could update for making like a real app. We could add like in update name and update email and all that good stuff. Um, this is, this is fine. This is fine for us. And let's grab this, uh, oh, we have the sign up button is already outside of it all. So let's go back to the profile screen, stick that in and we'll put some spacers in as well. And if we sign out, we crash. Amazing. <laughs> so I guess what happened was when we signed out, we null out the, the current authorization on the login controller. Uh, and this still has a reference to it. So it's still trying to redraw this screen. I was hoping it would dismiss the screen first before trying to redraw it. Um, uh, but here we are. <laughs> so I guess that means we have to be a little defensive here. Um, it's really hoping we wouldn't have to. I guess instead of grabbing the login controller out of the environment, you can use this logged in view and stick all of this inside. And let's see how let's see how this hacks. Let's bring out the phone. Oh, this is so plain now. 
doesn't say hello. Okay, so if we go to the profile, and then we sign out. Yeah, so that works as I would expect. Okay, so yeah, I guess we have to be defensive and do this in two places because of, I guess, the order that it was trying to refresh the views, which I guess is okay. So now this login view, we want to make it be reusable. Um, and so I guess we need to figure out how we want to let people configure it. Um, uh, I guess to start, oh, wait a minute. Can we just do, um, can we do navigation title out here? Okay, that didn't <laughs> that didn't exactly work. All right, because the uh, this is not inside of a navigation stack. It's outside of all that. Hmm. Let's see, so this little login view has its own its own concept of logged in or not. Just in case. And I suppose it would have a title right about here. font would be uh, headline, I suppose, uh, with some spacers. And let's see that preview. Um, that is not the headline I was thinking of. Let's try large title. And let's put a Hmm. Go into the button at the bottom of the screen or in the middle of the screen? Um, I guess at the bottom is right near your thumb, right? Um, it's just it's just otherwise such a plain screen though. See what other styles do we have? Um, Subheadline, title, title two. That's just smaller. Okay, let's go with title. And yeah, I guess we'll keep the uh, keep going back and forth. Let's stick it in the middle of the screen. Now uh, let's bring out the iPhone view. Interesting, this did not, um, socket is not connected. Oh, now it booted. So let's see, is there a way to see the current stack?
navigation stack reader. So there's this navigation stack. And where's the other, looking for the other logged in. I guess I just want to make sure we don't have too many of those. Uh, this is, this is so long. Uh, focus? Nope, still can't see the full name of this class. Copy, perhaps? What happens when we paste? Nope, can't paste. It's not a string. Um, cool. <laughs> Um, I guess we can commit what we have, and then we'll go back to our to-do list and see what else we need to do. I think we're kind of, I think that's enough for making it pretty-ish. Add profile screen. Uh, with navigation. Um, yeah, I guess the thing with making this part reusable is is I think I need like another app to try it out in. Um, so this like making this part reusable might be might be a little bit down the line because uh to get it working in another app i want like the back end stuff to be uh, a little bit more set in stone first and let's see do i have a task for that uh not exactly okay uh make ios uh And I guess the the vision for this is um, we want to like kind of offer a login screen, a profile screen, and a login controller that they can all um, that anyone can sort of take advantage of and drop into their app, and we can. Make I guess I guess the profile screen would be optional, um, but I guess we want to kind of make it as um, like you don't have to commit to using all of it. Kind of opt in uh, philosophy here, um, kind of the opposite of Rails. Um, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that because of how um, I'm not sure how tightly coupled or how loosely coupled we can get away with with making these things. And I think having another app will help uh, motivate that. Uh, but again, this is all, if you want to take a look, this is all on my GitHub. Oh, I have it up right here. I don't have it linked from here. Um, GitHub.com slash full, full Q developer. Can't even type my own name, develop. And then we can look at uh, FQ auth, and we have the sample iOS app. So if you want to take a look yourself, um, I guess it's all up here on the initial branch. Um, uh, you can take a look and play with it yourself. Uh, I'd love feedback on this. Um, to make this uh, kind of nice and reusable for, for folks. Uh, but that's gonna be it for the iOS portion. No, wait, we have one more thing for iOS. We have one more thing for iOS. 
we have uh let's see so this is now done uh actually yeah uh two more two more things for ios actually so when the access token is denied we want to refresh <laughs> so this is i guess part of the uh the navigation helper not the navigation helper the uh Where am I? We have this little networking helper. Yeah, basically, um, if this comes back as unauthorized, then we need we want to uh, refresh our token, get a fresh token. I think currently the tokens last for 30 days, which is a little long. <laughs> um, and I guess we can try to test drive this. You like to create an Objective-C bridging header? No. What did I press that made me think I want to make a bridging header? Adding this file to app test will create a mixed... How? I'm going to try to not create it and see what happens. Does this run? It's going to run on my phone. I mean, it, it passed. I think it just didn't see any Swift file, so it assumed that it was an Objective-C target. Okay, so a few things. Uh, we're saving make it reusable for later. Um, I guess we can clean up some of these tasks. I guess what's uh, what's next is um, I just said it out loud. <laughs> um, when uh, access when forbidden might just be because the token expired, and so we want to refresh the token. If that still uh, doesn't work, uh, pop to login screen. Uh, at testable import um, the app yeah so I guess we would need like a mock Earl session or something here I just want to assert that it uh, it does the right things to the Earl session um, or is there a different way we can test this Yeah, there's only one dependence. Oh, there's also keychain. I guess we need a fake keychain also. So 
So fake uh, Earl session. Uh, I guess let's make a folder for these fakes. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy this though. Uh, I guess this can be a class. And we need like an Earl session interface, I guess. Which I guess means we need to uh, define it. And we'll probably define it inside the main app. And yeah, I guess uh, class. And while I do think this is good practice, I'm not sure I want to force this on other people. So this might not make it to the when we make this published, but it will be on the it will be on the GitHub for sure. And of course, we'll say that Earl session conforms to it. And the one item that we're using on Earl session is uh, this data for. So let's grab this signature. And we should be compiling. No, we're not compiling. Fault argument not permitted in a protocol method. What happens if I just delete it? Looks like looks like it's fine. Perfect. Cool. Now we're ready to now we're ready to go. Uh, almost almost ready to go. I guess we want to initialize this with uh, this needs some dependencies. So Earl session is an uh, Earl session interface, and we'll use this one instead of the what's it called the singleton. So now if we build now now we're missing some stuff. Uh, so here we can. I don't have to get too excited with dependencies for a sample app like this. Um, but I guess it would be something like this, where we pass in the, the one that we actually want to use at the point of usage so that we can test it with a fake when we, uh, when we want to. If this were a real app, maybe we would have a networking helper singleton somewhere uh, set up or, you know, something a little bit more robust for dependency management. But here we will make a fake URL session back in the test. And we will pass that in as a dependency. And what URL are we going to use? We're going to use uh, example.com. And what's the other problem here? We can try. OK. And we have uh, one more problem. Insert, oh wait. Thank you, Xcode. 
uh, missing return. Yeah, so we want to sort of uh, give it some stubs, I suppose. Um, now we can get uh, we can get pretty uh, involved with how 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 advanced you want your fakes to go. Uh, let's just keep it simple. Um, let's just say data for. Uh, is an optional one of these, basically what it returns, and we want to just return whatever data for was uh, set to. Um, now this is optional. Um, do we want to make this, what do we want to do here? Uh, I'm not sure exactly which direction we want to go, so I'm just kind of sketching some stuff out. I'm thinking that if we don't set up the fake, we'll throw an error. The other thing I was considering was forcing this to be in a constructor parameter, uh, but I'm not sure that's exactly what we want here. And if we want it that way, we can we can easily change it back. We can say. Um, And say fake was not uh, set up. Cool, so that's our fake. So if it's not been set up, uh, it'll throw an error. Otherwise, um, it'll return what's been set up. So let's go ahead and continue with writing the test. Ooh, and this means making a whole bunch of big stuff. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, because we also need a fake keychain. Um, we also want to, I guess we also want to see what the request was. We're going to offer that out as a, uh, as something that, uh, that can be asserted against in the test. Uh, let's see. Um, Yeah, if we save if we save this, then uh, the, the, our test can make assertions on what got passed in. Yeah, I guess I don't really care to assert on what comes back necessarily. I'm kind of asserting that we send the right things to our old session because. I think we I think we basically trust Earl session to work correctly. Let's see, where's our fake? Also, I don't I don't want to set anything up. Uh, but I guess we do have to return something or other. So we could return the empty string Ugh, and an Earl response. So I guess we'll still gotta still gotta make an Earl response no matter what. 
request uh, Earl, mime type nil, expected content length zero, uh, text encoding name. Uh, I don't even know what that is. C can this be nil? Oh, it can. Wait, what's the error? Oh, because the Earl might not be there. I guess that's a, that'll be a different error, I guess. Uh, so we'll just say request Earl is the Earl from the request. Otherwise, throw an error. Y'all, you didn't set up the uh, the test right. Uh, Duckface Thug says, "Are you trying to mock Earl session calls?" Um, yeah, because I want to assert how my networking helper works um, for refreshing uh, tokens with the server. So yeah, I'm setting up some mocks so I can have some tests without without having to like video record stuff. Just want to see that it it interacts correctly with the with its dependencies, which is the keychain and Earl session. I might be overdoing it here a little bit. <laughs> Expected. Uh, yeah, so let's say uh, request uh, Earl is missing. Oh, I just need to force unwrap this. Okay. Uh, Duckface Thug says Earl Protocol exists for that exact reason. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, but it sounds it sounds cool. Yeah, so if I make this request, then afterwards I can. Uh, assert equal on stuff that was saved inside the fake. I guess I just want to say that the the Earl was hit, I guess. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so this is just the a basic kind of uh, happy path. Result is unused. Um, yeah, we can just throw it away. And then let's do the same thing with the keychain. Let's make a fake keychain. Uh, Duckface Thug says, I guess my point is that you don't need to write this fake URL session. You can just pass the URL protocol to your actual URL session and control responses for the URLs. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really concerned about the responses and I don't, when I make full responses, I'm just I'm just asserting what gets passed into the Earl session uh, is is what I'm concerned about for this test. I want to assert that given the keychain is in this state, that the Earl session gets the headers uh, from the keychain. 
So I hear what you're saying, but it's, uh, it is slightly different. which means we'll need a uh, keychain protocol. Uh, and this, of course, will live in the main app as well. The real official birdie. Hey, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a while. What do you need a Feek keychain for? I guess to, to be able to set it up in a certain way so that whatever is in there can be... Um, assert that it gets passed to the to the Earl session. I'm making a test for the networking helper uh, because, you know, when we get a 403, it might be because our token had expired. So we want that to trigger a uh, refresh. Which I guess would be a a call to a different server. And when that comes back, we want to try again to the original request. So it's really just an, an interaction test. Uh, we're not really asserting on like what gets passed back from the Earl session. Um, we don't really, don't really care for, for this test. Yeah, I'm gonna get the headers off of here, all HTTP header fields. Can I can I get the value? Yeah, get value for the authorization header. And I'm gonna assert that it equals uh, bearer plus uh, fake token. And this is what we're gonna stick in the in our fake keychain. And of course, this doesn't um, exist yet. Uh, I guess let's just stick it uh, next to here. Yeah, there's many ways to, to test things, and all of them have merit. Um, this is what I think is the best way to test what I'm trying to assert here. I guess we can make this kind of specific to our app with uh, the fields that we want on this. Uh, but to start, we'll just say that the keychain um, conforms to this interface. And then where do we use the keychain uh, in our app so far? Yeah, we're getting the current authorization off of it. Oh, this goes up here. And this should be, yeah, like that. Oops, I called it the wrong thing. Uh, I guess this is actually a get set, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so let's take the let's take the autocomplete and uh, yeah, that's totally fine for here. Your sleeve says have to run for meeting. Great stream today. See you later. Cool. I'll see you tomorrow, dude. Thanks for stopping by and thanks again for the gifted subs. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, so you can set a current authorization on here of a user with a user ID with a first name with a last name with a uh, let's see what should we name this token um I guess existing refresh token. An existing access token, I guess, yeah. And then let's format this so it's a little bit nicer to look at. Cool, so does this pass now? No, we got a failure. Oh, because it got something from the actual, um, didn't use the, uh, the fake. Okay. And we can go ahead and pass that in. Let's see, maybe if we format it like that, like this. Yeah, there we go. Built still failed, missing argument. Yeah, so here we can just pass in the keychain. Um, I guess this isn't quite a singleton, but kind of the default one. And down here as well. Cool. So I guess this, we assert that, um, we test that the uh, authorization header gets set, is set uh, from keychain. Yeah, so we're not really we don't really care what was returned back. Um, we're just kind of asserting that uh, that this is what get get passed through. It's more about the interactions of the objects than anything actually real. Uh, this next one might though. I guess we'll see. Uh, but that was quite a bit. Let's uh, let's commit what we have so far. Uh, start testing our networking helper and make some fakes.
Oh, it's uh, it's five o'clock. We might not get to this next test. I do have to get out of here, but we can maybe sketch how this one might look. We would set up the Perl session and keychain. Um, and what would the assert be? I mean, I guess it's just kind of an extension of here. I guess here we would want um. We would want to set up something on the Earl session. Uh, we would want to return uh, I guess something anything that has a 403. which is not so much an expired token triggers refresh when I say a forbidden uh, response uh, triggers a uh, token refresh and a retry. So I guess I guess this would actually Let's see, let's comment out this line for now. This would be the same. But I guess there would be multiple requests. So these would have to be, um, instead of just a single variable, um, on the Earl session, we would need uh, a way to record them. Uh, but that's something we can get to another time. Let's see, sketch out next test. Uh, yeah, but that's going to be it for today. Thank you uh, so much for joining. Um, this is all open source and on my GitHub. Um, the main server is here, fullcubedeveloper.com uh, slash fqauth. We'll point to here. And then there's the sample iOS app and the sample microservice. Um, and all of them work together right now, uh, as shown earlier on the stream. Um, we got our little app working. Uh, I'm trying to click on the QuickTime version. Uh, we added a profile screen. We got some navigation going. Um, we got all of our keys and everything synced up. We had a little bit of error there. Um, uh, see you too, Dragon Dust. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, feel free to join the Discord if you want uh, programming help or just want to chat. Uh, my website, fullcubedeveloper.com, has my open source projects. My apps on the App Store, some information about keyboards, protect your wrists, everyone. And I'm currently uh, available for hire. Um, if you need uh, help on your project uh, or just want to chat, I do that too. Um, my schedule is on my Instagram. Uh, basically just says I'll be back here tomorrow. Develop. Develop. Oh man, I'm brain dead. <laughs> yes, I'll be back tomorrow continuing on this. Uh, have a good evening, morning, or night, uh, wherever you are, and I'll see you tomorrow.